what kind of jobs do you think GPT language models would be better than humans at? Like full, like does the whole thing end to end better? Not, not, not like what it's doing with you where it's helping you be maybe 10 times more productive. Those are both good questions. I don't, I, I would say they're equivalent to me because if I'm 10 times more productive, wouldn't that mean that there would be a need for much fewer programmers in the world? I think the world is going to find out that if you can have 10 times as much code at the same price, you can just use even more. So write even more code. Just, the world just code. needs way more code. It is true that a lot more could be digitized. There could be a lot more code and a lot more stuff. I think there's like a supply issue. Yeah. So in terms of really replace jobs, is that a worry for you? It is. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a big category that I believe can be massively impacted. I guess I would say customer service is a category that I could see there are just way fewer jobs relatively soon. I'm not even certain about that, but I could believe it. So like uh, basic questions about when do I take this pill, if it's a drug company or what, when, uh, I don't know why I went to that, but like, how do I use this product? Like questions, yeah. like how do I use like whatever, this? Whatever what? call center employees are doing now. Yeah, this is not work, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I wanna be clear, I think like these systems will make a lot of jobs just go away. Every technological revolution does. They will enhance many jobs and make them much better, much more fun, much higher paid. And, and they'll create new jobs that are difficult for us to imagine, even if we're starting to see the first glimpses of them. But um, I heard someone last week talking about GPT-4 saying that, you know, man, uh, the dignity of work is just such a huge deal. We've really got to worry. Like even people who think they don't like their jobs, they really need them. It's really important to them and to society. And also, can you believe how awful it is that France is trying to raise the retirement age? And I think we as a society are confused about whether we want to work more or work less. And certainly about whether most people like their jobs and get value out of their jobs or not. Some people do. I love my job. I suspect you do too. That's a real privilege. Not everybody gets to say that. Mm -hmm. If we can move more of the world to better jobs and work to something that can be a broader concept, not something you have to do to be able to eat, but something you do as a creative expression and a way to find fulfillment and happiness, and whatever else, even if those jobs look extremely different from the jobs of today, I think that's great. I'm not, I'm not nervous about it at all. You have been a proponent of UBI, universal basic income. In the context of AI, can you describe your philosophy there of, of our human future with UBI? Why, why you like it? What are some limitations? I think it is a component of something we should pursue. It is not a full solution. I think people work for lots of reasons besides money. Um, and I think we are gonna find incredible new jobs and society as a whole and people's individuals are gonna get much, much richer. But as a cushion through a dramatic transition and as just like, you know, I think the world should eliminate poverty if able to do so. I think it's a great thing to do um, as a small part of the bucket of solutions. I helped start a project called WorldCoin, um, which is a technological solution to this. We also have funded a uh, like a, a large, I think maybe the, the largest and most comprehensive universal basic income study as part of, sponsored by OpenAI. And I think it's like an area we should just be be looking into. What are some like insights from that study that you gained? We're gonna finish up at the end of this year and we'll be able to talk about it hopefully early, very early next. If we can linger on it, how do you think the economic and political systems will change as AI becomes a prevalent part of society? It's such an interesting sort of philosophical question uh, looking 10, 20, 50 years from now. What does the economy look like? What does politics look like? Do you see significant transformations in terms of the way democracy functions even? I love that you asked them together because I think they're super related. I think the, the economic transformation will drive much of the political transformation here, not the other way around. Um, my working model for the last I don't know, five years has been that 
the two dominant changes will be that the cost of intelligence and the cost of energy are going over the next couple of decades to dramatically, dramatically fall from where they are today. And the impact of that, and you're already seeing it with the way you now have like, you know, programming ability beyond what you had as an individual before, is society gets much, much richer, much wealthier in ways that are probably hard to imagine. I think every time that's happened before, it has been that economic impact has had positive political impact as well. And I think it does go the other way too, like the the socio-political values of the enlightenment enabled the long running technological revolution and, and scientific discovery process we've had for the past centuries. Um, but I think we're just gonna see more. I'm sure the shape will change, but I think it's this long and beautiful exponential curve. Do you think there will be more, um, I don't know what the, the term is, but systems that resemble something like democratic socialism? I've talked to a few folks on this podcast about these kinds of topics. Instinct, yes, I hope so. So that it reallocates some resources in a way that supports, kind of lifts the, the people who are struggling. I am a big believer in lift up the floor and don't worry about the ceiling. If I can uh, test your historical knowledge. It's probably not gonna be good, but let's try it. <laughs> Uh, why do you think, uh, I come from the Soviet Union, why do you think communism in the Soviet Union failed? I recoil at the idea of living in a communist system. And I don't know how much of that is just the biases of the world I grow up in and what I have been taught and probably more than I realize. But I think like more individualism, more human will, more ability to self-determine um, is important. And also, I think the ability to try new things and not need permission and not need some sort of central planning, betting on human ingenuity and this sort of like distributed process, I believe is always going to beat centralized planning. And I think that like for all of the deep flaws of America, I think it is the greatest place in the world because it's the best at this. So it's really interesting uh, that centralized planning failed so, so in such big ways. But what if hypothetically the centralized planning- It was a, it was a perfect super intelligent AGI. Super intelligent AGI. Again, it might go wrong in the same kind of ways, but it might not. We don't really know. We don't really know. It might be better. I expect it would be better, but would it be better than a hundred super intelligent or a thousand super intelligent AGIs sort of in a liberal democratic system? Arguing. Yes. Oh, man. Now, also, how much of that can happen internally in one super intelligent AGI? Not so obvious. There is something about, right, but there is something about like tension, the competition. But you don't know that's not happening inside one model. Yeah, that's true. It'd be nice, it'd be nice if, whether it's engineered in or revealed to be happening, it'd be nice for it to be happening. That And of uh, course it can happen with multiple AGIs talking to each other or whatever. There's something also about, uh, I mean, Stuart Russell has talked about the control problem of, um, always having AGI to be have some degree of uncertainty, not having a dogmatic certainty to it. That feels important. So some of that is already handled with human alignment, uh, uh, human feedback, reinforcement learning with human feedback, but it feels like there has to be engineered in like a hard uncertainty, yeah. humility, you can put a romantic word to it. Yeah. You think that's possible to do? The definition of those words, I think the details really matter, but as I understand them, yes, I do.